Take the tripod and unscrew the arm and extend it out away from the legs. While holding the tripod like a baby, unlock and extend the lower legs. Extend the legs and place the tripod on the ground. Be sure to push down the center support so that the legs are secure to the ground. Depending on what you will be shooting, you may want to raise or lower the tripod to get the correct shot. When shooting an interview, you typically want the lens the same height as the person's head. On the head of the tripod, there will be a bubble level to make sure that your camera and tripod are level. Some tripods will have a screw under the head. Loosen up the screw and the head will be able to be moved around. Move the head so that the bubble level is center in the circle. If the tripod you're using does not have a movable head, you will use the legs to adjust the level. Unlock the leg and raise or lower each leg until the bubble is centered in the circle. On the top of the head, there will be a screw on the right side. This will unlock the plate from the tripod. On this tripod, loosen up the screw and push it down and lift the plate out. On some tripods, there will be a button on either the back or the side that you push in and slide the plate off. On the bottom of the plate, you will see an arrow showing which side the camera lens needs to be. Make sure you have this side of the plate near the lens. Grab your camera and on the bottom, there will be one or two holes. If there are two, they are different sizes. Screw the plate on using the hole that fits the screw you have. Tighten the screw on with either a coin, in this case a quarter, or you can use a key, but be sure to use the flat side of the key. Now place the camera on the tripod on an angle, pushing it down. Once in, tighten the screw. On the side of the head, loosen up the tilt knob while holding the handle and see if your camera is balanced on the tripod. If it is not balanced, the camera will fall either forward or back. If it is not balanced, loosen up the screw plate and carefully slide the plate. Retighten the screw and check your balance. You may have to do this a few times. You know you're well balanced when you let go of the camera and it doesn't fall front or back. Most importantly, never leave the tripod without locking the tilt and pan knobs. Otherwise, the camera will fall and you can possibly damage the camera and or the tripod. Start by putting on the battery. Look at the battery and locate the electrical connectors. This will go on first. Slide the battery in and push it until you hear a click. This may take a few tries. To take the battery off, push the gray button next to the battery and pull the battery out. On the side of the camera is a sliding door where the SD card will go. Slide up the door to access the SD card slot. Take your SD card and slide it in with the brass contacts down and the label up. Push it in all the way and slide the door down. Make sure that the switch for the camera mode is in AVCHD so that your project will be recorded in HD. Now on the other side of the camera where the grip is, push in the white button and slide it down to the on position. Back on the other side of the camera, locate the menu, up, down, left, right, and enter buttons. 
You will use these to navigate the menu option when we change the camera settings. Press the menu button and look into the viewfinder. Use the down button and highlight record setup, then press enter. With record format already highlighted, press enter. This menu is where you can select the format you would like to use to record in. Press the up or down arrow to highlight your preference, then press enter. Then press enter. Once back in the viewfinder, you can now see what setting you have. Press menu and arrow down to other functions. Press enter. Already highlighted, press enter on card format. A word of caution. Make sure you have removed your footage before you continue. Arrow up to highlight yes and press enter. Arrow left to highlight yes and press enter. Once done, press enter to exit. Now look in the viewfinder and you can now see how much time you have to record. This will be different based on the size of the SD card and what you have chosen for your record format. This next step is not necessary, but if you want your video to have special time codes so you keep track of things like the day one, two, or three, or SD card one, two, or three, you can set your time code to a specific number. Press the menu button, arrow down until record setup is highlighted, and press enter. Arrow down until TC preset is highlighted, and press enter. Arrow up and press enter. Here, you can now change the time code to what you want. In this case, I will make it one hour, zero minutes, zero seconds, and zero frames. To do this, use the up and down arrows to change the number, and the left and right arrow to change between hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. Once done, arrow right until you highlight enter and press enter. Once back to the menu, press the menu button to get back to the viewfinder. Now you're ready to record with the correct settings in the camera and a clean SD card. You will want to use the camera in manual mode so that your exposure, focus, and color balance are correct. Not all cameras are good in auto. First, make sure the switch is in manual. Next, look in the viewfinder and you will see a number in DB or you will see AGC. If it is in AGC, push the iris wheel in to change the setting. Once you have the iris in manual, where you see a number, you can now move the iris up or down to open or close the iris to get the correct exposure. To get the proper focus, you will need to use the ring at the front of the camera. When shooting a person, you will want to focus in on the person's eyes. If it's an object, pick something that is defining. Always zoom in as far as you can so you can get the best focus. Focusing on a wide shot will not get the best focus. Our cameras have a focus assist button. After you zoom in all the way, push the focus assist button and your shot will zoom in even more allowing you to really fine tune your focus. Once you are done, make sure to turn off focus assist. You will know you have turned it off when you see the on-screen display again. Zoom back to the framing that you want. Always do a manual white balance. While looking in the viewfinder, push the white balance button until you see AWBACH. It may have an NG next to it indicating no good. This is okay because we will do a white balance. Once you are on AWBACH, place a white card in your shot where you will be shooting. 
zoom in so that the white card fills as much as possible of the frame. You may have to open or close the iris a bit to get a proper exposure. Now, press and hold the white balance button until you see AWB ABB active and let go. The camera will go into black and back to white. Once it is correctly done, you will see AWB ABB OK. Make sure to reframe your shot and fix your iris if needed. To plug in the XLR into the mic and the camera, make sure to line up the pins with the cable. Push in the cable and make sure it is tight. To remove the cable, push in the button and pull on the connector and the microphone to separate. On the back of the camera, there is a switch to provide 48 volts to the microphone. Depending on the type of microphone you're using, you may or may not need to use this switch. In this example, we do. Next, make sure the line mic switch is set to mic because that is what we're using. Now plug in the male side of the XLR into the channel one. Make sure the connector is all the way in. To remove the XLR, push in the tab above the connector and pull the XLR out. You will want to use headphones to monitor your audio. Take the headphone connector and plug it into the headphone jack located just under the battery release button. Make sure you select what inputs the camera will be using for each channel. In this case, we are using the rear for channel one, which is our mic, and for channel two, the front mic, which in this case is the camera mic, as a NAT sound or backup. Now make sure you are in manual audio level control. While using the audio dial for channel one, which is our external microphone, you can now adjust the level. Looking in the viewfinder, you will see a bar and dots at the bottom of the viewfinder. This shows you the audio level for each channel. First, look at channel one and adjust the levels using the dial. Adjust the levels so that the audio is peaking just past the vertical line, which indicates good audio levels. Do the same thing for channel two, which is the on-camera microphone. Now you are ready to record your shoot. Once you are done, make sure you properly disconnect the XLR, remove the tripod plate from the camera and leave it with the tripod. Collapse the tripod legs and fold it in along with the arm. Neatly put away all of the equipment in the bag. Don't forget to remove the SD card and transfer all of your contents of the SD card to your computer or external hard drive so that you have it to edit later. Once you have transferred your footage, put the SD card back into the camera and return the equipment to the loan room.